Easter Sunday morning, brothers and sisters. Thanks for joining us online. And our team here at YFC would like to say we love you all. And it is our hope to help you enter a time of worship this morning. We are able to gather here today only by the power of Jesus' resurrection, who is also the cornerstone and pioneer of our faith. We're going to worship Psalms 118. I will give you thanks for you answered me. You have become my salvation. The stone the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. The Lord has done this, and it is marvelous in our eyes. In the seemingly stormy times that we are facing, Jesus is ever unchanging. He is the cornerstone on which we build the body of Christ. And he also makes the weak strong. Let us worship out of thanksgiving and out of our trust in the power of Jesus' name. Jesus, my righteousness. 
morning and today we come here together to observe the Holy Communion. I'm sure many of you have been wanted to do this for some time because we have stopped uh, worship for a few weeks. Everyone is so excited to have this Holy Communion. Let's begin with reading the text for the Holy Communion. 1 Corinthians 11 Verse 23, For I received from the Lord what I also pass unto you. The Lord Jesus is in remembrance of me. Next verse, 
In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you time of crisis, Lord. We pray, Lord, that you help us not to forget, Lord, that your life is most precious, Lord, because it's good. This is the Lord's body which is broken for us. Do this in remembrance of me. Praise the Lord that I've been given the opportunity to preach uh, this uh, Easter message. And today I have a. I'm going to preach on 1 Peter 2 because it's a wonderful passage for Easter. Let's begin with a word of prayer. Dear Lord, we thank you, Lord, because your word is powerful. To remind us, Lord, to draw close to you and to be able to be your to be as pilgrims and strangers in this world, to practice your resurrected life. Pray, Lord, that you be with us as we are come together. And pray for those who are sick, those who are scared, and Lord, those who are suffering. Lord, we know that you have a purpose for all that's going on, Lord. But help us to cling to you. Not just to remember your suffering, Lord, but your victory over death, Lord. And our bodies will one day pass away, Lord. But our faith in you, and we will meet you again. In Jesus' name, pray. Amen. That's a German guy. His wife was sick. And the hospital, she called the hospital for the first time. And she was there, and he cried how she was getting along. And he was told, she is suffering, but she is improving. She is improving. The next day, he called again. And again, he was told, she is improving. And this went on for some time. And each day, the report said that she is improving. Finally, one day he called and said, how is my wife? And the person on the other side answered, she's dead. And the man said, how can it be? You can't always tell me she's improving. Very despondent and desperate, he went out and he met a friend. And the friend asked him about concern. Well, how is your wife? 
And the man replied, she's dead. Oh, how terrible, the friend said. But what did she die of? He thought about it for a while and said, improvement. In your Christian life, in this coronavirus time, in this time of suffering, you can get easily stuck. You can be easily stagnant. And you can be easily strained in this, I call, sorry time. First Peter chapter 2. First Peter was written to believers who were suffering rejection, opposition and discrimination, and mostly exile to faraway places and foreign lands. The cycle Peter began with the word suffering. And the Apostle Peter encouraged Christians in chapter 1, which I'm going to speak about one time in the English worship, not the bottom now. By affirming chapter 1 that they have the assurance of salvation. But you know, salvation is the net, not the end of a journey. It's just the beginning of a journey, which we're going to address in chapter 2. In chapter 2, now he exhorted them to be strong and steadfast in Christ. No matter the suffering danger or distress. Now, for Christians that have studied chapter 2, we begin to reflect what attitude and assurance we have. Living in this uncertain time, unrest and worst of all, for a lot of people, unemployment. How is our faith lift up in the face of persecution and peril? That's why the Christians have to run for their lives in First Peter. And why is salvation for us not just a past tense, I would say, but a present tense experience? Now, this chapter is not just with imperative. I know a co-worker of mine says that, Pastor Yap, only talked about imperative. <laughs> He's here now. But today I'm going to tell you about one very important Greek structure called purpose thought, which is introduced by the word Hina, H-I-N-A. And Paul is going to throw a lot of Hina subjunctive in this passage. The first thing you can learn from this chapter is that we are all fitted for God's service. So be fitted for God's service. As, as strangers and pilgrims on this earth, once you're saved in chapter 1, you're not saved for the purpose of just sitting around. God fits you for a service. I'll read from verse 1. The red is the imperative, and the orange is the hina, the what we call purpose call. Whenever you study Greek, you see this word, it's the it's the, it's the high, it's the upper end. The imperative is usually to the front end. Okay, start with the imperative. And when you go to the end of a sentence, you go with the purpose clause, the kingdom jumping. So here it goes. Beautiful passage. Therefore, rid yourself of all malice and all deceit, hypocrisy and envy, and slander of every kind. This is a negative. So I knew one baby, you are to you try to pray pure spiritual milk, so that by it you may the purpose grow up in your salvation now that you have tasted that the Lord is good. As you come to him who is the living stone, rejected by humans, but chosen by God and precious to him, you also, another stone, the living stone, are being built into a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood, offering spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. For in Scripture it says, in Paradise, see, I lay a stone in Zion, a chosen and precious cornerstone, and the one trust in him will never, ever, in Greek it's like that, never, ever, double never, be put to shame. Now to you who believe this stone is precious, but to those who do not believe, the stone 
the builders rejected has become a cornerstone. And a stone, this is the third time, the fourth time the word stone. The stone from us were stone to Jesus Christ the cornerstone. Us, God, next time for others, became a stone that causes people to stumble and a rock that makes them fall. Very powerful message. Let's begin with verse 1 and 2. Paul begins by saying, Pray, the first imperative. You know, milk has fallen on hard times. So hard, the last week I bought oat milk. Oat milk because it's on special offer. But since that soya bean, uh, soya milk has taken a lot of the market. But no matter what, uh, milk is still very important. How important is it? Let's see the next PowerPoint. Here are some quotes on milk. Okay. Milk is one of the cheapest and best calcium sources. Number two, milk is the best source of magnesium for our body. Number three, milk is the best source of vitamin D, which is required for healthy bone and skin. Mother's milk is the best source of protein for the baby. Okay. Another one, milk is the only source of nutrients and micronutrients, example vitamins. And the last one, we now recognize more and more that factors in breast milk influence the gut microbiota, which will help your immune system to have fewer chronic illnesses in life. And Paul begins with asking us to pray. This is a baby for spiritual milk. Believers have no choice after their salvation, which is in chapter 1, but to grow in the Lord in chapter 2. Okay. Paul begins with the negative part, but he doesn't want to talk too much about the negative, which is malice and guile, and then the plural sense, the plural form, hypocrisy, envy, and slander. These are all seen in everyday life. But Paul wants to accentuate the positive, which is to pray, okay? So the negative are the viruses, okay? But, okay, uh, the, 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 all the bad vices in life, the viruses and the vices are the same, okay, for, for our analogy. But the contrast of them are not the virtues or the values. You don't counter vices and viruses with virtues and values. But you counter it with what? Pray, spiritual milk, the Word of God. Because the Word of God will produce these values and produces virtue. But we don't try to produce this virtues and values by ourselves. Pray. Pray this word is an imperative, okay? And Paul loves to use this word three times in this episode, in the first chapter, the first, first few verses. It's very, very passionate Paul, only he does that. Pray, okay? Now, this last 40 days, Pastor Yap has been on a fast, okay? Not that I run very fast, but I've been fasting quickly, okay? The last 40 days. I cheated twice, but I'm allowed to cheat because uh, the 40 days does not include Sunday. So you've noticed that Pastor Yap has preached twice within this 40 days. And each this time, I didn't cheat too badly. I just drank my coffee, get myself warm. Okay? So, but sometimes in the morning, I pray for food. And the such all things. You pray for spiritual milk, which is needed as believers to have natural growth, to have normal growth, okay, and to have no worthy growth in your spiritual life. And and not only that, what's the purpose? There's a Hina cloud. Do you see that orange color? Yeah, I don't think you see now. But you crave this not just to crave, but there's a purpose. Okay, a lot of people just crave for craving sick. But the purpose is to what? Grow up in your salvation. All of us are to grow up in our salvation. Grow 
what this word is very, it means that we have to become strong in spirit. That's what is translated in Luke chapter 1, verse 80, and chapter 2, verse 40. It means we have to grow. And this is a word that describes Jesus Christ to grow. And after we grow, we are supposed to provide us for more for spirit us for service. Okay? Now this ultimate purpose is to grow. Uh, grow is in Matthew 6 28 about how the leaves lead into the field grow. It's a natural part of our life, okay? And it talks about Jesus Christ himself doing that too. Now, you notice when you grow, then talk about prepare you for service. You become this living stone so that you can be able to serve God. Okay? There are three stones I can say, okay? We have a stone, plural, verse 5. He is the stone, verse 4, singular. The last stone is that He's the cornerstone that will cause people who just believe him to stumble. Okay. So one is us, stone. C is the stone. And then the cornerstone is for unbelievers, those who do not accept him. So we are supposed to offer ourselves to God. But how are we to offer ourselves? In this hard time, we must not go downhill, but instead of think that what are we doing for our neighbors, our family? Are we offering acceptable worship to God? Are we offering approved sacrifices to God and be authentic in our worship to God? Okay. So this is the first thing from this passage you have to know, is that in this hard time, don't forget we are fitted for God's service. Secondly, Second point is the focus on the splendor. In the first point is for ourselves with God. The second point is for ourselves and other people. Verse 9. But you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's special possession, that you may declare the praises of Him who call you out of darkness into wonderful light. Once you were not a people, now you are the people of God. Once you have not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. Dear friend, I urge you as foreigners exiles to abstain from sinful desires which wage war against your soul. Live such good life among the pagans, okay, other people, yeah, that though they accuse you of wrongdoing, they may see your good deeds and glorify God on the day they visit you. Now this story of a man and a, and a parrot, okay? The man had a parrot, a talking parrot, on his shoulder, and he went into a bar. And the parrot said, people, people. And the man said, yes, parrot, I know. These are people who come to the bar. And the man went to church on the Sunday with the parrot on his shoulder. As he took the parrot with him, the parrot saw some people and said, People! People! The man said, No, 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 parrot! I know these people. These are church people. What his parents said, same people, same people, okay, they're the same guys in another place. Now, Peter, in chapter 2, he not only talks, now they talk about they, the new identity, okay. Now, this new identity is contrasted with the Israelites, Christians versus the Israelites. As you look at the uh, as you look at the next five point, and you see that there are four things that they talk about. Okay, all Peter calls them the chosen people, and this is taken from Deuteronomy chapter seven verse six that the Israelites are the 
sort of people. Peter says, you are peculiar people, which is also taken from Deuteronomy chapter 14, verse 2. The Israelites, Jews of the Israelites. And Peter says, uh, you are a holy nation and a peculiar people, a kingdom of priests. That's taken from Exodus chapter 19, verse 6. So all these verses were used by Moses in the Old Testament for Israel. But now Peter transformed it. He uses it for a reason. Because in the Old Testament, the Israelites just wanted the identity. They wanted the reputation and the recognition. But they didn't want the responsibility. But what did Peter do with this? He said that, he said that in the Old Testament, the Israelites just wanted the privilege but not the part of doing what God is doing. Do you see this new next uh, PowerPoint? You can see that the what chosen people, royal priests, holy nation, and special possession, which is in first year means. Ho chosen people means uh, they are they are chosen, royal priesthood means they are crowned, holy nation means they are consecrated. And special possession means they are created, they are cre creation, okay? They are made, the word is made in, in Greek. So with all this, okay, with all this, there are people who are selected by God, dear to God, distinguished by God, they are devoted to God, and they are different from the world. So much so that Peter continues to use five contrasts in verses 9 to 12. The first contrast, Contrast is from darkness into his what? Wonderful light. It talks about they have conquered the past. Their new life. The second contrast is in verse 10. You were not a people, but now you're the people of God. Just as close as saying uh, God has chosen them, just as the Israelite. Now they have a new community called the people of God. And next one, you have not received mercy, but you have received mercy. The third contrast. Now it talks about the compassion of God for them. The fourth contrast in verse 11. You were foreigners and exiles, but now you have to take away all those sinful desires. This is talk about citizenship in heaven. The last one, from good life versus doing wrong. It's about their life, their character has changed. So we see that the outcome is that we got to all this, not just for the Israelites or for us to sit there and do nothing. But tonight is to declare Him. Uh, this is the word of angel. The word is from the word angel. An angel is supposed to be declared, okay? To, to declare Him all the greatness, His grace, and His goodness to the world. So we are not saved, okay, to sit. I always say, save to share. Okay. God did not chose us, just as He did not chose Israelites, to be superior, but to be servant. Not to be selected group, but to be special group for Him. Not to be a sophisticated scholarly group, but to be a sacred group for Him. We are to teach. We are to tell about God's grace. We are to testify about His wonderful deeds, His attributes, His atonement for us, and His acts in history. Okay. But sometimes things hold on to us. So in verse 11, we say that, I urge you as far as exile to abstain from sinful desire. Okay. To take away what is bad. Okay. And because all this, the sinful desires are going to dominate us, they're going to dictate us, they're going to degrade us, dehumanize us, Lord, and to debilitate us so that we cannot fight this war. Why? Why do we have to do all this? Just now we talk about the despair. Now this is the this is the hina. The second hina is to glorify the Lord. Okay. 
is to be able to give him all the respect, the reverence, so that people may receive him in their life because they see you as the stranger and alien and the pilgrim on earth. So the people, the pagans, what they say, they want to listen to you. They want to learn about God and they want to long to know him. To be able to see you exalt the Lord and esteem the Lord in your life. And not to just make you look good, but to be able for pagans, the Gentiles, the heathen, to know about it. So chapter 1 talks about assurance of salvation, but chapter 2 talks about where you're going, not what has been accomplished for you, but what. And finally, the third point is to be following in the steps. I love, I chose this for instant message because it tells us about beginning from verse 17. Following the steps. Verse 17. Show proper respect to everyone. This is all imperative. Love the family of believers. Fear God, honor the emperor. Slaves, in reality of God, submit yourselves to your masters, not only to those that are good and considerate, but also to those that are hard. For it is commendable if someone bears up under the pain of unjust suffering, because they are conscious of God. But how is it to your credit if you receive a feeling for doing wrong and endure it? But you can suffer for doing good and you endure it. This is commendable before God. To this you will call. Because what? Christ suffered for you, living in an example that you should follow in his steps. That's why I chose First Peter chapter 2. Now, First Peter, uh, okay, let me tell you my last story. The, the man walking to a gift shop. The soul a lot selected such items. And near the cash register, he saw a display of cats, baseball cats. And that's one that attracted him most of all, because of design, color, and especially the letter. W W J D. He was puzzled what the letters mean and couldn't fit whatever he was thinking of because he, he wasn't a Christian. So he asked the clerk, what do the four letters mean? And the clerk said the letters stand for what would Jesus do? And the clerk said this is Letters are uh, written to inspire people not to make rash decisions in their life, but to imagine what Jesus would do in the same situation. The man thought about it for the moment. And the clerk asked him, Do you want to buy? And the man said, I'm sure Jesus would pay US 1795 <laughs> for one of those. What would Jesus do? What did Jesus do? He died for us. He died for us to leave us an example and the suffering so that we can live for righteousness. Now, it begins to the last point. You look at verse 17. If you count, there are four imperatives, right? Honor. Everybody, this is God. Love, believers. Fear, God. Honor, the King. And this is, this is following this verse in verse 18. That's the word submit. Okay. Verse 18. Do you see that verse 18? Slave in reverence fear of God. Submit. Do you see that word submit? You see, it's not red color. Why is that so? Oh, Peter has a very clever way of doing things. So, if you look at verse 13, you submit yourself to the Lord's sake to every 
human authority that is invalid, right? But verse 18, he did not use it anymore. So Paul is tread, Peter is treading on the borderline. Submit. It's not one time, sometimes it's imperative. Sometimes it's just a participle. It's a how. It's not must. Okay? It's a how you do things, which is verse 18. Paul is very compassionate. He knows it's very hard for slaves to order them again. They have been ordered at home. But Paul didn't want to order them. Peter didn't want to order them. He tell them, it's how are they to live their lives? Submitting yourselves to your master. Okay. Because it's very, very hard. Nowadays, the church is Potamus. Why do we call people Potamus? Because that creature lives where? Under water. Okay. So, hippo, which is the Greek word for hoopo, is under. And Peter uses five under preposition words. Okay, here are they. The first one is to submit. Submit means put yourself under an arrangement. It's not that the people are superior to you, but you arrange, you arrange, you accommodate, and align with that order. So that's what it means to submit. We like to use English submit, not subject. Subject. Uh, rest of English, submit is from you to your master. Subject is your master, subject you. <laughs> so that's why you should to submit. You put under a certain arrangement. Okay. Uh, so we, we submit, we adjust to it, not that the person is better than us, superior than us, maybe wealthy than us, but we are saying, okay. But you submit yourself to them. Yeah. The second hoopo, the hippo word is uh, verse 19, which is to have patience so that we can bear up underneath. Okay. Hoopo, Pharaoh. Pharaoh is Christopher. Christopher is to bear, bear Christ. So when you're under you can be able to bear it, which is patient. The second hoopo word. Uh, the third hoopo word is to, one is to bear up, the one is to endure, okay? To take it patiently, was great. And the best part is the verse 21, the last two hoopo words. He left, Jesus Christ left us an example. Leave is also under leaving us, leaving behind. An example is very beautiful. Under grammar, he's using, he's using himself as a type, as a copy, an example for you to see how to grief, suffering, and persecution, even death, he can glorify the Lord. So this is my Easter message that we be more and more like Christ. And this word, submit, is very, very important and very, very beautiful in the Bible. Do you know in New Testament, we have to pass Matthew 28 chapters, Mark 16 chapters. In order to go to Luke for the first time, they have this submit word. Do you know who is the first person to submit used in the Bible? In Luke chapter 2. The guy in the temple, the little young guy, Jesus, after the temple, he submitted himself to his hand. To submit the word is a good word. This is Jesus did to his parents. Okay? It doesn't mean Jesus is fear. It doesn't mean he is disadvantaged. It doesn't mean he is weak. It's not none of that. It's just the uh, under arrangement. It's a natural part of our life. Okay? It doesn't mean you have to be passive. It doesn't mean you have no power. It doesn't mean you have no, it's not practical. Okay? But it's just a way 
that we go along in a society. But sometimes, you know, as Christians, you don't always, we can always speak up, okay? We are not supposed to hide ourselves, fight our tongues, okay, and make ourselves invisible, okay? Because the missionaries have worked against a binding foot, and a lot of ministers you know, in England have worked against slavery. They're always called to be, speak the truth in love, okay? Now, why do we do all this, okay? Why did Jesus do all this? Verse 21, so that we may follow his example. This is a beautiful model for us in our society today, in our family today, and with our friends. Okay? Why? Oh, Peter ended up with this tree not, verse 22, he did not sin. Okay. The second who, the next verse, he did not retaliate and he did not threaten. Isn't this beautiful? Five people and then three not. Not sin, not retaliate, not threaten. Why? There's a lot Peter. It's in order for us to live to righteousness. Verse 24. Jesus Christ did all this not because he liked suffering, but he able to use suicide so that we, okay, so that we might die to sin and live for righteousness. And by the way, the emphasis is not die. The he and the purpose cause emphasis is on the word live. Good Friday, we talk about dying. But Easter, we talk about living. Okay? Living for righteousness. So, Peter is very clever. He talk about comparatives. But more than that, he ended up with his China subjective to purpose. He's able to live for righteousness. So, brothers and sisters, this is my last application. We talk about the word submit. There are five things in the Bible about submit. The first thing is to submit to God. The law of God and the righteousness of God. Are you submitting to God? The most important person to submit to is the Lord. After that, you'll be able to live it out the way God wants you to. The second thing is submit to your family, just like Jesus Christ did. He submits to Mary and Joseph, and they were panting, and they were groaning because they couldn't find this little Jesus. But he was always a very submissive person. They just had to find out more about him. That's all. The third thing is that we submit to authorities and ordinance. You know. We are here trying to submit to an ordinance, right? To stay inside okay, and to be able to listen to the word of God through this. Okay. We try very, very hard to submit to all this. Okay. And the fourth thing we have to submit is to submit to your elder in church. Spiritual mentor, okay? Your pastors, okay? uh, your teaching elders, submit to them. And to teach the word of God, don't give them grief. It's just because you don't like to see. And the last thing, beautiful, the Bible ends with the last submit, the last time in the Bible is to 1 Peter 5.5, 5, very interesting, 5.5. 5. Submit to who? One another. Okay. Young and old, men and women, unbelievers, or sometimes even Believers and sometimes even unbelievers. Try to learn from their perspective. Remember, submission is not my fault, but my faith. You arrange yourself under and in order to live for righteousness and to be able to show them about God, His grace, His goodness, and His glory. 
Lord, you want to thank you, Lord, for everything you've done for us. You said so special. Because remember, Lord, you died so that we might live. There's no darkness in your life. And Lord, we know that you're resurrected because death is nothing to you. Because you will meet us again, and Lord, you will pave the way for us. When we are scared, Lord, we just run to you. And we know, Lord, that even though through hard times, we may suffer physically, Lord. But spiritually, Lord, we are always alive in you. In Jesus' name, pray. Amen. <coughs> for delivering the word of God. Indeed, we are saved to share the praise of God and to submit to God's authority. But our Lord lives, we have this hope of eternal life and can draw on his power to be set apart for him until he returns. We invite you all to stand as we sing our song. Thank you. 